Where do I start? <laughs> I guess I start by saying welcome back to the channel. Um, I would like to apologize to all the Modified and CD fans out there who have been left in the dark. Um, our videos just completely stopped, but there is for good reason. I'm getting ready to talk to you about my journey through open heart surgery. Now, before I get into this video, I also want to say this is not to be used for educational purposes. This is solely for individuals who are either getting ready to go through open heart surgery or being told that they have to have it because it can definitely be a scary sight. Um, it can be, you know, very mind triggering for a lot of people. So with that being said, let's get on to this video. All right, so as I said before, I know that our videos just came to a halt, but I have kind of been off the books for a while and just kind of recovering from a major open heart surgery. I went through an open heart surgery at the Heart Hospital of Austin. Um, and to give a little insight about my, my open heart surgery procedure, I had an aneurysm above my main aortic valve that allows blood to go in and out of the heart to the rest of the body. That aneurysm was getting a little larger um, and as it got larger, it pulled the valve apart, uh, the aortic valve. That aortic valve was opening and closing, but it was not closing tight enough where it was allowing a little bit of blood back into the heart, which was causing the heart to double work. Um, got this news uh, about May of last year. And uh, to make a long story short, I tried to do everything I can to research and find doctors and all these different things that could maybe help my situation and not have me go through a full open heart surgery. Um, because open heart surgery gets your mind going. You start looking at videos, you start trying to research your own things, the, the mortality of it. And, you know, that can play a lot of factor in your mind. And it is one thing that I tried my best to get out of. But knowingly, everything that I did led me back to my main surgeon uh, and procedure. And what really actually took the place of me going and doing this was that I had uh, a second opinion with a cardiologist. And he kind of talked me through the process of me trying to do all the other avenues that could keep me from getting open heart surgery, but could cause challenges. He said, you know, personally, we're at a new day and age with technology and skills and tools. So the best bet is to have them get in there, see it all for themselves and take care of what needs to versus trying to find the smallest route and least effective route as possible and something happening and then they having to open up anyway. Uh, so that kind of made my decision up this time around, I should say. Um, so, you know, I went on and just decided to finally get this done after waiting almost six and a half months to just come up in my mind that I really wanted to do it. So I'm not going to say that it, it's going to be easy. I'm not going to say that it won't be scary, but I will tell you this much. You will get through it. This, this is the, the, the morning of our operation here our journey <laughs> into the heart hospital of austin so we're gonna get this down didn't get too much sleep last night but uh the journey begins look at <laughs> look at my two sub my, my support system behind me wife and my mama <laughs> we're gonna get this done and i'm gonna come out even better all right, all right. let's do it Now, before the day of surgery, you're normally gonna go either 24 hours before, or in this case, I went on a Friday to do all your paperwork and signing of things of that nature. And I will definitely tell you, number one, filling out it all, all of that paperwork is going to do more than scare you. It's, you know, between if they have to give blood because you lost too much, you know, who can talk for you to resuscitate you if things happen, if this goes wrong, if this goes wrong. I mean, the paperwork that you fill out is never always in the best light 
or best interest of the outcome that could happen. Um, so it's definitely something that really put a lot of focus in my mind over the weekend before I actually had this surgery on that Monday morning. Now, Monday morning when you get in and I had mine first on the books, we were there by like 530 in the morning. Uh, to get rolled back by six, get all the preliminary tests and stuff done. And, and they also kind of like explained to me uh, what would be happening during this process. Now, the, the day before or that Friday, I got to talk with the anesthesias and he talked to me about the entire operating process. And more so, these nurses right here tried to keep me calm, give me some medicine, do some vitals and some readings and then kind of talk about uh the day of right then and there um and then what will be like when i get up and things of that nature so uh it was good um i want to thank my mom and my wife for being here um, we also had two lovely friends that came in um out of the blue to to be here on surgery day i will tell you it took a lot of prayer uh, for me to a make the decision and b go through this and come out of it uh but it was uh, a process that morning and I, I couldn't tell you how nervous I was but man I was nervous to know that one uh, I was going through a major operation two that during this operation they'll have to stop your heart physically to work on it and three have this chest incision that is very deep so you know you know none of this process or what the outcome is going to be so therefore you feel a certain way I know it's awful scary but you got one of the best surgeons in the house I'm gonna tell you between him and Felder mm -hmm. Dr. Dewan is also a re I mean we really do have great surgeons I would come here mm -hmm. even if I wasn't living here mm -hmm. I would ask them to transfer me to the heart hospital and she was not lying everyone I talked to said this is the best surgeon in the house to do this job Dr. Karendi has been a lifesaver to many people and he did an excellent job on my surgery as well. Alright, so how this all work is I'm going to pick him up probably about 7.45, maybe a little bit earlier, take him back to the room. We're supposed to start at 8.30. Okay. So, um, oh, you can finish. It's all done. Okay. Um, and then it'll take us about 45 minutes to an hour just to get him prepared for surgery once I take him back. Okay. And then I'll give you a phone call. And then the last call you get, I don't want it to alarm you. It's just going to be for you to go to a private room. That means Dr. Karindi's finished doing what he needs to do, and he's going to come and talk to you. Okay. Okay? All right. We're going to take great care of you. Okay? Um, the Ativan and the morphine will kind of help you until we get into the room. Once we get you into the room, they'll give you something a little bit more powerful in your IV. Help you with those nerves. Okay? When we're done, you'll go to the ICU. You'll probably still have the breathing tube in you, and they'll try and get that out later on today. Good, good. He did fine. Um, he replaced the aneurysm and saved the valve. Uh, so the valve was working better. You know, he had a moderate leak before. And yes. he's got a tiny leak now, but much better than what it was. I'm so uh, happy. Yeah, the other valves look fine. The heart muscle looks strong. Okay. Um, but as far as the valve goes and all that, that all looks good. The heart looks good. So um, just, just, you know, not entirely out of the woods, but so far everything looks really good. Good. Okay. So give him about an hour or so to get him upstairs and settled in. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then I'll let you come see him. All right, so now we're down to the most important part that people want to know is what is it like when you come out of open heart surgery? I mean, if you've done enough research, you kind of know like these are the things that's going to happen during the surgery, and you know, with with the power of God and prayer, you're going to come through it. But most people um, are in the fear of the unknown, and coming to is a completely different story. Big, strong pop, okay? All right, when this tube is out, don't swallow anything. So I'm gonna suction your mouth and the back of your throat again, okay? I don't want any of that phlegm to go into your lungs, okay? Got it? All right. No swallowing. One, two, three. Pop, 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 pop. Don't Yay! swallow, don't swallow. Don't swallow, don't swallow, don't swallow. I know. Um, I was rolled back to ICU and I was still intubated and intubated is when you have the breathing tube in your throat and it's breathing for you. 
Um, also, the anesthesiologist told me um, that there are three levels to the brain function as they are taking you off of anesthesia. And there's one that's uh, controlling, you know, bodily functions. And then there's another that controls kind of your, uh, your, your neurological stuff. And then three is where your memories are generated. And they said it they like to try to get you in between stage two and three because two you're kind of maneuvering yourself but it's before three before you create memories and um you're able to really kind of remember because i'll be 100 honest i thought the intubation process of them removing the uh, breathing tube was a dream i remember doing it but after it was done and it took like almost later that afternoon or that day for me to fully understand what happened because my wife and my mom brought up to me about how much I was kicking the edge of the bed. And the thing was, I just thought I was dreaming kicking the edge of the bed, but that was actually happening during the, the excavation portion. And I was like, man, I, I just you didn't really feel or remember it so it was done at the point to where you knew it was going on but it was in the stage before you could really remember how bad or good that process is okay my journey so far with my husband has been inexperienced but it's worth it came through like a champ on his surgery and i am super proud of him had to just walk back to central market but it's been a good thing See you guys soon. Surgeries, and we ran you a little lower just because after the surgery, your body didn't like it. And so once your pressure got up, um, and you look better, and once your pressure got up a little bit, um, all your, it's called lactate and your kidney numbers all improved. So everything just did a complete 180, which is good. Well, we're just about done. Welcome to day two, post-op day two, I should say. Surgery is on Monday. And it's Wednesday now. Um, day one was a little rough still, so I didn't get back to you guys. I had a very, very tough time last night, but um, I'm working through it right now. As it's eight something in the morning, they finally took one of the IVs out, um, and uh, started taking my blood sugar, and I had some weirdness happened with uh, I guess the other side of the aorta that they wanted to look at so I had to do a CT scan last night and an echocardiogram. A little um, tight on my breathing but I was able to get up last night again one more time and sit down and uh, got right back in bed. It's just it's been a little bit difficult for me. It's been more than I wanted it to be but um, yeah the stenotomy you can really feel that when you're breathing. So just be prepared if you have any open heart surgery that you're gonna be able to feel your sternotomy. Like when I breathe in real hard or breathing in general, sometimes you can feel the friction of it rubbing together. But other than that, I'm hoping by day three, I'm feeling even better than I am today. So we'll get with y'all this afternoon once I see what else they am taking out for me. Now we make it on to post day Two, I should say um, you know you're still kind of groggy and you know what's going on but you pretty much all you want to do is sleep you know day one day two I was actually um, getting breakfast in me um, talking to my mom and my wife about things and just kind of really taking it easy the pain level was still at about a seven at the time um, working its way down to a five because the hospital gives you the best drugs ever uh, but it came the moment of truth where it was time to stand up and use my legs and you really forget how much blood flow and how much your heart pumps to take to do these things like that. And, you know, after a major surgery, they've been in, and they've been pretty much aggravating the heart and the heart didn't like it. So your heartbeat is a little bit faster and it's taking a lot more strength to do anything. And it took a lot for me just to stand up and sit in the chair for the very first time. Well, I'll cut this 
stitches, and then we'll go to a yoga retreat. And we'll breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and you're going to hold it. And when you're holding your breath, that's when I'll pull the drains out. Now, the second thing that had me worried were these drainage tubes. I watched some people with drainage tubes, and there'd be one kind of had the worst facial expressions and, and stated the most excruciating pain with that. Uh, like I said, you don't truly remember the exhibition portion with the breathing tube, but you're pretty much, you know, alive, well, and functional when they get ready to take these drainage tubes out of you. Um, let me say by start, the Heart Health Heart Hospital of Austin had some of the best nurses that explained everything and did everything to a T. They let me know when stuff would get ready to happen. Uh, the night that my heart started fluctuating, they had to take me back and do the CT scans. They kind of walked me through exactly everything that they were going to be doing before they started. Um, and, and this process of my drainage tubes was no different. Uh, you have three drainage tubes, one going up to your pericardium, which is kind of like the skin around the heart, and then the other one's around uh, the surgical area to just kind of catch fluid and things of that nature. And they're in you um, from the time you wake up till, you know, depending on how much fluid you have still, you know, being produced from you, I should say, or in, in blood, but mine were able to come out by day three. And... Um, just you know on a different note if you're very squeamish about things this may not be the process for you you may want to fast forward through this end but it is part of the process and i will tell you laying straight down uh was an issue because you're already in pain but they came out pretty quickly and um it didn't last too long after they were out like there wasn't any pain from those areas i feel everything <laughs> i know i know it's not fun Okay. All right, so now we're at our yoga retreat. All right, it's gonna be the fun time. I'm gonna lay you flat a little bit more. We just don't want a lot of resistance, I know. Big deep breath out. Breathe in, breathe out. No, not yet. Breathe in, breathe out. Next breath, we're gonna hold it. Breathe in, hold it. Ooh, there we go. It's done, it's done. All done, all done. Let it out. Let it out. Don't hold that. Breathe in. Let it out. You can you can raise this back. Like I know. Well, you can breathe with your chest. Breathe up your chest. Yeah. Okay. That's good. All right. Okay. I just think those are cute. <laughs> those are cute. And what was the and white one? You are so. So this silly. is a Jackson Pratt drain. It wraps around your pericardium, mm. and it. Oh, well, I don't want to get your pretty blanket there. And then you see where that stitch is? Mm -hmm. yeah. All that going was above yeah, was inside. Like so this and forward was inside your body. But we're all done. And that was just a And you know what? Yeah. Now you have little holes. You can blame the doctor who inserted the body. Deep breath in. Move it out. Sorry, I meant to say that. Next one, we're going to bring deep breath in. Right. Yeah. Hold it. Right, Done. Let it out. It's good. Let it out. You're good. So you want to kind of see your puncture site so that you can yep. assess if you're holding adequate pressure. So that's our yeah. point, and this is our serial god. Okay. It is later in the evening since I got these chest tubes out, this Foley catheter out. They took the thing out of my neck, and I have a midline in my arm, and I'm actually sitting up in a chair. For the past two days, I haven't been able to get up and sit in a chair for more than five minutes, let alone get up. Between the pinching from the chest tubes to, I don't know, everything. I'm healing. Thank God I'm healing, man. Because I, I can tell you, it's, it is a process. We'll see what these next two days do. But I'm praying to get some rest and be even better tomorrow. This is the first day that I've sat in a chair and ate breakfast. I sat in a chair yesterday and had dinner. I still quite haven't done any walking yet just because 
it's been taking a lot, but I promised myself I'm gonna get up and walk today. This is his first walk. Literally his first walk from surgery. I'm so proud of it. Take a little further next time. Yep. You don't need to scoot over. The man behind you is talking. Jump over. <laughs> Doing great, sir. Doing great. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Thank you. Now, with your chest hurting and mentally you just going through everything, taking your first steps and walking again was so much harder than I reimagined. Taking these few little steps and then having to come back to the room took so much effort, but I was able to do it. Um, wasn't ready, but I did it. Okay, post-op day four, all my wires taken out this morning. So I had drainage tubes and the neck uh, insulin and all that taken out, but I still had heart pacing wires in. And uh, those felt a little funny, but they didn't hurt. So just letting you guys know, uh, Heart Hospital of Austin has been really good. Like all the nurses have been explaining it because me, I am a person who really needs explanations. For, that's just me. Like, if I don't know it and understand it, I can't do it. So, we made it to post-op day four. And yes, I did go to a step-down unit that day once they had a bed and room available. Once you are in that phase and all your wires and stuff are out, it's pretty much monitoring, getting more walking in and, and trying to get strong enough to get the doctors to say, OK, yes, you can go home and uh, start your true recovery process, which is definitely a true recovery process because you don't have any of the good meds that they give you at the hospital. Um, I stayed hydrated as much as possible. Uh, my wife was there. I mean, around the clock and doing everything at the house and coming back and seeing me, making sure I was good, making sure that whatever the nurses need, it was being taken care of. So, you know, it was truly a blessing having her there at the hospital. So I went through all the way to five and six. And on day six, surprisingly enough, my surgeon came to see me and it was good news that I was able to head home. Okay, I'm taking my baby home today. I'm going downstairs to get the car and we will have another video of him getting together and get out. But yes, we are leaving. God is good. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. Getting out of the hospital. Post day six. We all have some issues. That is the wife of the year. I did it. I made it home. That is the wife of the year. No. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, here we are. Um, one week post stop one week at home so a total of two weeks i should say you know when you get home that first week um you gotta make sure that you're doing some of the same care that you had in the hospital just kind of on the same regular basis but just by yourself and all that you're at home uh you still feel a little out of place just due to the medicine running off um getting used to just the regular local drugs that you have um and then staying on schedule with that and i will tell you um an experience may be different for different people all around, but I struggled at least the first three days. I'm not going to say the entire week was easy. I'm not going to say the entire week was hard. But as far as if I truly struggle, I would say it'd be the first three days. You know, you get home, you're excited, but then, you know, you get your position set up and you get comfortable. Uh, but then when it's time to sleep, you're like all over the place. Time to eat, you're still kind of all over the place. Tuesday um i hit like a mental breaking point with some pain all of that stuff just 
hit all at once and it was just oh and i had a very very big breakdown moment um i mean i broke down and my wife was there to help me for it all so feel really good about that um by thursday all of that started to subside and you have just pretty much all the pain that you would normally have about your incision around you know your ribs and everything else that was open but you kind of have gotten that medicine out of your system whether it's bathroom or just time or sweat or whatever um that kind of subsided from there and um i will say this what was very very helpful is making sure that i got up and i walked every day regardless of how i felt the night before regardless of how i didn't sleep or did sleep um i, I got up and walked i made a set parameter to walk around the downstairs area five times a day i mean I, oh, five laps and i was down i did my spirometer breathing every day and my wife stayed up on me on that uh so here we are ending in week one i feel pretty good i'm still a little impacted and sore from everything else uh everything takes you know a little bit of time to still do whether that's walking downstairs coming upstairs um getting up after laying down flat so it was good that i got this this uh new foam material that sits me straight up or lays me hot down however you want to do one of the best uh, options that we have bought uh, for this process and surgery uh, but i will just say it, it takes time and everybody's experience is going to be different and this was just mine so i hope that did some good for those who are getting ready to go through the procedure or is on the fence about getting the procedure done if i came through it so will you do not let fear control you so i'm not saying it won't be there but understand and know your doctor has you your nurses has you god has you your family has you and you're going to be all right um this is about a month and a half after surgery and uh, my scars healed pretty well so i will show you and um i just got cleared to drive so if you do have any other questions or if you would like to know uh, from my wife's perspective on what it takes to not only have to be there and take care of someone who's going through an open heart surgery, but how to deal with that day to day because she was all over the place and doing everything that she could to make sure that she was there for me. Um, she has her own story to tell. So if you have that and you want to know, please leave a comment down below. And I thank you guys again. Now let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. See y'all in the next one.